Well, despite leaving school at 16 with only her school C, she's held CEO positions and chaired boards for some of the country's largest corporations. Her learnings from this experience, candid thoughts on the gender pay gap and insights of the juggle of being a wife, mother and business leader are all laid out in her latest book, A Woman's Place. And to tell us more, please welcome to the cafe, Joan Withers. Yes! <laughs> Um, look, I've read bits and pieces of it. I will definitely uh, read this book. Um, certainly an inspirational piece uh, and your lessons that you've put in there, even bits on your personal life. Why did you decide to write one? Well, Mel, the real, the real objective in writing the book was just to show that no matter how humble your background, you can actually, in New Zealand, if you apply yourself and you get the right skills and qualifications, make it in the corporate world. So that was the overarching objective. And I think the second part of it was to show also that um, in order to be successful, you do need great support. And uh, I've been very lucky in that I've had support of my husband all the way through. Yeah. And, you know, when you look at your career, Joan, once it started going, you rose through the ranks pretty fast. What do you think that was down to? I, it wasn't that fast at the beginning, and I wasn't ambitious. I, was, you know, I had six years at home when my son was born, then went back into the workforce part-time. And I, because it was a sales-based role and I was doing a bit of writing of advertorial as well, very accountable, so it's all based on numbers. And when you get success, people start offering you other opportunities. So I did get promoted, but effectively within the same organisation. And I think it's just because every time somebody put confidence in me, I was absolutely committed to delivering on their expectations. Uh, in the book, you often refer back to learning and continuing to educate yourself. Um, tell us a little more about that. Well, that's a fantastic thing about being in business is you never stop learning. And uh, we, we all feel inadequate in terms of not having enough knowledge. For me, I'd left school at 16 when I had my, I just sat school certificate and because I was going out with the man I'm now married to, I told my parents I was out of school. I wasn't going to be constrained to just seeing him on, on, on the weekends and not being allowed to go out on Monday to Friday. So as I did get more senior roles, I was very conscious that I didn't have a tertiary qualification. And luckily for me, the MBA was just starting to emerge as a very credible qualification, which had content that was tailor-made for people in business, was available at Auckland University. So that was really the big learning catalyst, going back to university at age 36. And when you look at, I guess, the amount of women that we have on boards in this country, I mean, you're a bit of a trailblazer, you've, you've led the way. What do you think is stopping that from happening? I think it's, it's getting better, but we've certainly taken a long time to get there. What do you think's prohibited that? It is too slow. I am optimistic that it is starting to improve now. I don't see myself as a trailblazer. I think people like Roseanne Mayo and Dame Alison Patterson are both examples of that really first generation of women on boards. When I came along, women were still the exception and I was very confident that, that the numbers would improve much more rapidly than they have. But it is starting to get better. And what I think is you need women around the board table who are actually saying to the CEO, which is almost invariably a male, what are you doing about your direct reports? What are the long lists like for the positions you're trying to fill? and just encouraging those people to look at, at the whole talent pool. Mm. And most of the, the younger CEOs that I work with today just recognise they need the best talent and they're very, very receptive and uh, enthusiastic about getting great women up to achieving their full potential. And, and while you're here, Joe, I wanted to ask you this as well. I mean, you were pushing years ago, I guess, you started talking about the, the gender pay gap. Do you think we've been a bit slow in New Zealand? Because if we had sort of listened to what you were saying years ago, we might have been able to close that gap a little bit faster. Do you think we've been too slow? Yeah, look, it's a really complex issue and obviously the Terra Nova case has gone a long way to, to making things better in that regard. If I look at my own experience, I don't think I was anywhere near as aggressive as a male counterpart would be in negotiating salaries when right. I did get a promotion. So I was looking more at, oh, well, it's X amount of increment over what I'm getting now, that's fantastic, as opposed to saying, what is this job really worth? And it's a generalisation, but I think women are far more likely to think, oh, that's fantastic, you know. Mm. I'm getting an extra amount and I'm very happy with that and this person's got confidence in me doing the job, so.
What's the argument um, to CEOs, to boards, um, uh, even in management positions, why should we have more women or even more diversity? The business case for diversity is proven. It's irrefutable and there are some massive studies around, around the world. CS First Boston did a, a significant one a few years ago. So the risk when you don't have a diverse board or a dis diverse executive team is you get groupthink. With diverse boards, the um, return on equity is better, the TSR is better, virtually every business metric improves because you're getting diversity of thought and that's what you need. So it's not just about gender, it's about looking at, at all aspects of diversity and making sure that you get the best possible composition for the board. One reviewer wrote about this book uh, and they were surprised that you were very open. Obviously that was an important part of writing this book, being completely honest. Was there anything you were scared about when you were writing this book? Uh, yeah, there's quite a lot that I was scared about <laughs> and thought about and, uh, and got some advice on, uh, but I think I have to be authentic. It's pointless writing a book and putting your name to it unless you are authentic. So some of the personal stuff, I thought I'm putting myself out on a limb. I don't know how my sisters will react to the way I've described my mother, for example. Mm. You know, that's pretty challenging. And then some of the, the Feltex experience obviously was difficult to describe because it was that chapter is really about the, the effect it had on me and um, the way I got through. So yeah, you always worry how's this going to be received. So I could talk to Joan for hours. You could, yes, yes. I know. It's, yeah. The, yeah, this is you and in a book, really. Um, so <laughs> yeah. There you go. You can take that copy. I'm home. going to. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much, Joan. I mean, what an incredible career, and I think it's really awesome that you're sharing your knowledge, your insights, and your personal life with everyone to get a better understanding of how it works and how we can make it better for everyone. So really. Appreciate it and congratulations. Joan's book, A Woman's Place, is out now at all good book outlets.